Hi everyone, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on time series with a really cool concept today called Granger causality. As we saw in the vector autoregression videos, sometimes we don't care just about one time series and lagged versions of itself. We care about multiple time series and about the interactions between them. One very specific thing we might care about in that situation is whether one time series is the cause of another time series. To give a concrete example, let's say you live in a neighborhood and house prices in your neighborhood go up for whatever reason. Now what you might expect sometime in the future is house prices in a surrounding neighborhood in a different neighborhood that's close to yours might also go up because house prices tend to be tied geographically in that way. So these two time series, the first one being house prices in your neighborhood over time, and a different one being house prices in the next neighborhood over time might be linked. One might be the cause of the other, and we might care about this because it'll help us predict house prices in the future. So let me give you a very similar situation in this case, and then we'll look at how to maybe figure this out mathematically more robustly rather than just kind of having a guess. Let's say we have two cities. There's a rich city, which is this one up here, and we have a poorer city, which is the city down here. Now each of these cities can choose to export a certain amount of goods every single year. So that's given by R sub t for the rich city. So R sub 1 is the number of goods exported by the rich city in year 1. And then P sub 1 is the number of goods exported by the poor city um, in the first year. So let's say the poor city is basically trying to, of course, get out of its financial deficit or debt. The poor city is trying to become more financially viable. So it looks to the rich city for guidance. And it's basically just going to determine how many goods it exports any given year by basically setting that number to the same as the number of goods exported by the rich city in the year prior. This is something pretty common in finance, actually. Um, even with governments or entire countries, you might have that one city who's trying to pull itself out, out of poverty might link its currency to the currency of a more uh, financially well-off country in hopes that that simple action will lift the poorer city out of poverty. So we'll be looking at that similar situation here. Now, if the poor city chooses to uh, go about that strategy, we would expect the following graph. So the blue line you see here is R sub t, which is the number of goods exported by the rich city over time. And each timestamp, let's say, is a different year. So we see that it goes up and down over time. Now, the poor city in the second year, so let me give some labels here. So let's say this is year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Let's say... Uh, the, in the first year, the rich city exports this many goods. Now, following the strategy, in the second year, the poor city, given by this green dotted trend, is going to export the same amount of goods. Now, in the third year, the poor city chooses the amount of goods to export based on how many goods the rich city exported in the second year. So, basically, the poor city's graph is a shifted version of the rich city's graph. And the reason for that is because it's basically choosing its export strategy by mimicking the export strategy of the rich city one year prior. Now that's how we kind of tell graphically, but how do we tell mathematically whether or not one time series is uh, linked to another in this way? Now before I go into the math, I want to introduce some terminology because we've been throwing around the word causality like it's no big deal, but in all honesty, a lot of people in time series and stats take this idea of causality really seriously and it's not something that you can just throw around. Um, so that's why we have this idea called Granger causality. We say that if two time series are linked in this way, uh, such that one time series is basically, you can predict it really well by looking at the lagged values of a different time series. In this case, if we knew, for example, the rich city's uh, exports in year six, then we could predict the poor city's exports in year seven by just choosing the same value. And so it becomes very easy to predict the poor city's export strategy if we know the lagged values of the rich city's export strategy. So if two time series are linked in that way, we say that one time series Granger causes the other. It's very important that you put the word Granger there because saying just causality is a whole different ball game and is much more difficult. Because we don't truly know if that was the cause, but we know that it helps us to predict. So maybe that's the next best thing. So to reiterate, in this case we would say that R sub t, which is the rich city's export strategy, will be Granger causing P sub t, which is the poor city's export strategy. Now let's look at a mathematical formulation for proving uh, whether this is true or not, not just looking at it visually. Here are the steps you go through. I just wanted to go through a step-by-step -step process, nothing too fancy. The first one is you're going to find the best AR or autoregressive model for P sub t. 
which remember is the poor cities export strategy. So let's say we do that using, remember the PACF can be a great tool to help you figure out what are the lags you need in your AR model. So we find that P sub T is equal to phi one, P sub T minus one, plus P uh, phi three, P sub T minus three. So we find that we use the first lag and the third lag of the time series to help predict the time series um, in the future. So this is our base model. Notice we haven't brought in any information about the rich city yet, and that's because we want to see how good we can get without in incorporating any uh, additional information. Um, the, another way to say that idea is if, we, if our prediction using just the lag versions of the poor cities export strategy is just as good as if we started incorporating information about the rich city, then the rich city, we don't even need that information and it does not grange or cause our poor cities strategy. So that brings us to step two, which is we add the R sub T or rich city export strategy terms into this model. And let's say that we find that R sub T minus three and R sub T minus five are significant. Now I want to take a quick pause and think about how did I get these values? Well, that ends up being a two-step process. So we try out a bunch of different lags. We try out R sub T minus one, T minus two. There's even strategies to help us get which lags we should consider. But let's just say we consider a bunch of different lags of the rich cities export strategy. For each one, we run it through a T test. So that T test tells us whether or not that lag by itself is helpful in predicting the poor cities export strategy. If it is significant, then we keep it. If it's not, then we do not keep it. So at the end of that t-test uh, filter, we're gonna have a couple different lags of the rich cities export strategy that are helpful in predicting the poor cities export strategy. The last thing you wanna do is take all of those lags that you've gathered for the rich cities export strategy and put them through an f-test to see if all of them together are helpful in uh, predicting the poor cities export strategy. So you can have cases where the t-test tells you that certain ones are uh, helpful but when you run all of them together through an F-test, it doesn't say they're significant, at which point you drop them. So let's say, uh, optimistically in this case, we find that R sub T minus three and R sub T minus five pass the T-test filter and they pass the F-test filter, which tells us that together they're helpful in predicting the poor city's export strategy. Then we keep them. And then the last thing we do is conclude. The conclusion part is really simple. If we have any, any at all lags of the rich cities export strategy in our final model, then we conclude that the rich cities export strategy Granger causes the poor cities export strategy. The reason being uh, that we found that if we knew information about lagged values of the rich cities export strategy, our prediction becomes significantly better for the poor cities export strategy. Therefore, that's our Granger causality right there. Conversely, if we went through the t-test and f-test filter and found that none of these rich cities export strategy lags were significant, then basically we found that we can't make this model from step one any better by including information about lagged values of the rich cities export strategy. So we say that the rich city strategy does not Granger cause the poor cities export strategy. So that's in a nutshell how Granger causality works. The main points I want you to take away from this are the intuition behind it, which says that one time series can help predict another, and that's the idea of Granger causality. The second thing I want you to take away from it is that Granger causality is not causality. It's just a more watered down, but still helpful version of thinking about one thing causing another. And the last thing is these three steps that you would use to mathematically determine whether or not one time series Granger causes a different time series. All right, so until next time.